from wicked ways. Father, forgive us for the things that we said. Forgive us for the things that we've done. Forgive us for the things that we have raised up above you. Our idolatry, Father, forgive us for not prioritizing you and making our opinion bigger than you, Father. Heal us, cleanse us, forgive us for our wrong thinking and wrong thoughts and moving in the wrong direction. Not honoring, Father, the voice of the Spirit and honoring our voice above the voice of the Spirit, Father. Forgive us and heal us tonight. Forgive us for places that we have gone in our thinking, places that we have run to in our mind, Father. Forgive us tonight.
rest upon me. Holy Spirit, rest upon me. Holy Spirit, rest upon me.
okay. Can we pray for her? We feel great. She yeah, Wanda's trying to get away without She's trying to leave. Yes. Yeah. Let's pray for yes. her before she leaves. Yes. Can we pray for you before you go? Uh, Can we pray for you before you leave? Would you? Sure. We can. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little slow, but I can. I'll come down. We'll come down there. Yeah. Come on, babe. Since you come to service, I've been loving on her and hanging out on the porch. Now, it's the first time she's in service. So. I just can't sit. I just can't sit too long. Well, what do you want the Lord to do for you? Huh? What do you want the Lord to do for you? Whatever He wants to do. Amen. <laughs> 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 well, she needs to eat. <laughs> some momentum going. I was uh, get ready because if you want some prayer, we want to pray for you. So John chapter 5 talks about a story that we're very familiar with and I'm going to just briefly hit on it and, and then we're going to pray some more. Um, I want to break the spirit of religion that would try to keep us from having our healing when we are supposed to be healed all the way back at the time of the cross. 
Right. And so things have happened where people and spirits have come in to the church and to the body to prevent us from obtaining what's already ours. All right, so I want to read uh, John chapter 5, verse 1, and I'm going to start at verse 1, and um, if you want to follow along, you can do so. This is the story of uh, the pool of Bethesda, which was a real thing. They found it. It's a real deal. So listen to this. Jesus returned to Jerusalem. I'm reading out of the Passion Translation because I like it. Then Jesus returned to Jerusalem to observe one of the Jewish holy days inside the city near the Sheep Gate, which is the Sheep Gate, which is the gate where they brought the sheep in for the sacrifice. There is a pool that in the Aramaic, it's called the House of Loving Kindness. We call it Bethesda, but it's called the House of Loving Kindness. And this pool is surrounded by five covered porches. Picture it. Hundreds of sick people were lying there on the porches, paralyzed. There's some people that are paralyzed there. There's people that are blind there. There are people that are crippled there. And all of them are waiting for their healing. For an angel of God would periodically descend into the pool to stir the waters, and the first one who stepped into the pool after the waters swirled would instantly be healed. So there's some kind of a method going on. It's not just get in the water whenever you feel like it is. Yeah. Get in the water when it's being stirred from the being from heaven. Now there was a man who had been disabled for 38 years lying among the multitude of the sick. And when Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that the man had been crippled for a long time. So Jesus said to him, do you truly long to be healed? In verse seven, the sick man answered him, said, sir, there's no way I can get healed. For I have no one who will lower me into the water when the angel comes. As soon as I try to crawl to the edge of the pool, someone else jumps in ahead of me. Then Jesus said to him, stand up, pick up your sleeping mat, and you will walk. Oh, Jesus. If you need anything tonight, you just need to stand it up. Stand up, pick up your sleeping mat, and begin to walk. Immediately, he stood up. He was healed. So he rolled up his mat and walked again. Now this miracle took place on the Jewish Sabbath. Mm -hmm. yeah. When the Jewish leaders saw the man walking along, mm -hmm. carrying his sleeping mat, mm -hmm. they objected and said, what are you doing carrying that? Mm -hmm. yeah. oh my God. <laughs> this guy is been sick as long as the children of Israel went around the wilderness, right. Scripture says. Right. Right. Scripture says they went in the wilderness for 38 years, mm -hmm. and then for the next two years, they, they made a, a beeline, and they started taking the territory as they went through different territory. This guy is sitting among the sick, the crippled, paralyzed and as soon as he gets his miracle the religious crowd wants to know why are you carrying your man <laughs> why are you carrying your mat don't you know it's sabbath it's not lawful for you to carry things on the Sabbath. And he answered them, the man who healed me told me to pick it up and walk. <laughs> what man, they asked. They still haven't said anything about him being healed. They just, <laughs> I, have, I just have one word for you tonight. Is that some of us don't have our healing because of religious voices Come on now. that have kept you 
on one side when God is on this side and in between is these religious people. That's right. All this religious mm -hmm. stuff, this religious spirit that we keep having to deal with when God is trying to get something to you and religious people, religious spirits, you would choose for either one of those. Uh -huh. Both of them are nasty, spirit or people. That would come along and try to keep you from having what God wants you to have. Wow. This particular Bethesda was by the altar. The sheep gate is the gate that you brought in, so the people, the sheep, so that you can do the sacrifice, mm -hmm. so you can make a sacrifice. So this thing is like very proximity-wise, they're very close. Not only that, is that, but there's inside of Bethesda is the, the pool of the Bethesda or the, as they say in the Aramaic, the house of loving kindness. There are people that are sick and there are also religious people. Yeah. Why didn't Jesus heal everybody? Why didn't he heal everybody? Because he could have. And in all the other scriptures that we see, he's always healing everybody. Yes. And Jesus healed them all. Yeah, but here, he did not heal everybody. In fact, he didn't say anything about an angel coming and waiting. This is going to be your time is coming and it's on the way. You just keep holding on and hold on to hope. Beyond hope. It's, and when that you're stirring, everybody else is not going to be able to move. But you will be able to. He could have healed Everybody, he could have said all kinds of things. He could have done all kinds of things because he's Jesus and he's, we've seen him do it before. But in this particular place, he spoke to one person amongst crowds of other sick people. And he told him, be healed. And he told him, take up your bed, your mat, Start walking because you, you got it. And then the Bible says that Jesus left because there was a crowd in there. And of course, you know, then they start, who's the, who's, who, 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 who told you to carry your mat? Not who healed you. Yeah. Who told you to carry your mat? Right. right. Yeah. I say come out from among them. Yeah. 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 Your life is not a word. Your life is not worth the fiery darts from somebody else's words yeah. trying to keep you from having what you already are supposed to have because of what happened on the cross. Yeah. The Bible says that he was wounded for our transgressions, yes. wounded for our iniquities. By his stripes, we were healed. We all know that. So what in the world is in the way of us having and obtaining what was already declared to be ours at the cross when blood was spilled at the at the whipping post. How come we don't have what we're supposed to have? One of the reasons is because of religious people, religious churches, religious spirit. Choose one of the three. <laughs> because as soon as you begin to say, you can be healed, you can be whole, there's a little voice sometimes that just says right here on your next to your little devil, just start saying, yeah, but you did that before. Or you said that before. You believed that before. You heard that before. But you still didn't get it. Yeah. That's a religious spirit yeah. Yeah. trying to tell you, you know, you tried that. You get it. It's it's like you ever tell somebody, you ever get with somebody and you try to give them a new idea and they tell you, oh, that will never work. That's right. <laughs> That's called an idea killer. Mm -hmm. As soon as you get a brand new, fresh idea and you're all excited, hey. Pastor Pam's like, hey, you know what? <laughs> this is what we're going to do. We're going to expand this wall right here. We're going to take it out another 50 to 100 feet, and we're going to add another set of chairs. And so I'm like, no. Oh, I don't think that's a good idea, Pastor. Do you realize how much that's going to cost us to do that? That's a religious spirit. You're an idea killer. Yeah. That's the yeah. same thing that happens when you have something going on in your body. Wanda isn't here, but what we, what, what Pam told her, Pastor Pam told her, uh, was to, to, to watch what you're saying. Right. Watch yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, don't, don't watch yeah. what you're saying. Right. Don't say I'm, I don't have it. Mm -hmm. Start saying I'm hungry. I'm like, start there. <laughs> right. 
start with something like I'm hungry, not I can't eat. I haven't eaten yet, I won't be able to eat. Who knows what I'll be able to eat? I'm just not hungry. I mean, none of those words line up with you are healed, no, eat. That's right. that's she should go home and eat right now. She should go home and put something in her mouth and tell the devil I'm swallowing it and it's going all the way down, it's gonna yeah. stay down. Yeah. I'm gonna start gaining weight because I'm healed. Yeah. But it's the religious voices that are all around us trying to tell us and convince us that we don't have what he's already said we were we were healed we we already have something already and because then your body starts telling you no you still in pain no you still dealing with you still gotta take a shot you no, you still no i got my healing yeah so Here's, here's, why is he taking up his, why does Jesus tell this guy, and only this guy, take up your mat? Because the mat means that he took residence there. It means that he, that's where he stayed. That's, he didn't move out that way. That is, that is like his domicile. That's his, that's a big word for him. He lived there. <laughs> domicile. He lived there. And so Jesus says, you know what? All this that you have been maintaining, you will maintain no more. You will not have to manage your healing in your sickness anymore. You are free. You are healed. Take up your bed. It's like find you, like you kicked out. You're getting ready to find a new place to live. So the religious voices will say, oh, but if I get healed, where am I going to live? The devil is alive. Because you'd rather be trying to figure out uh, how I can stay like this instead of all of the great things that can happen when you become like that. And so religious voices come in to keep you from holding on to, grabbing on to, believing for, hoping for, getting a good grip on that and convincing you you're not ready, you're not qualified, you need some training, you need some teaching, you need this, you need that, you need somebody to do this, you need somebody to do that, don't, oh, don't, no, no, we need, we. And so all of those words of doubt, we cast out in That's Jesus' right. name. Amen. In Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Even though we came here to lay hands on whoever wants some hands laid on, sometimes you're dealing with stuff in your own body. Let me lay hands on myself. Yeah. yeah, that's right. A religious voice would be like, "You can't pray for somebody else because you aren't feeling well." The devil is alive. Jesus could have healed all of them, and he chose one person. Why? Because a religious spirit was in that place. All of those people, all of those different levels, and all of that spirit of religion going on. Nobody talks about Bethesda from the aspect of there's just a lot of religious spirit going on in that room, in that place of loving kindness, as they called it. But only one person can get to the stirring of the water. There's so much other stuff that has been said. The Father wants us to know tonight just that. We have to move past religious voices that will try to hinder us and keep us from obtaining what God has for us. Religious voices, demonic voices, people, religious spirits, whatever it is trying to keep me from what the Father says is mine. I don't need to be adhering to it. I don't need to be listening to it. I don't want to do all that worshiping and then not, not obtain what I'm supposed to have. I want to get at his feet, fall prostrate, and then get what I'm supposed to have because I have his attention. I want him to say, what do you want? And I want to say, this is what I need. And he says, where is your faith? And I say, here is my faith. And he says, go, you have it according to your faith. Right. Why can't I have that too? There's no reason why you can't. It's just somebody's religious voice. Trying to tell you, no, you have to qualify. You have to do this. You have to do that. Make sure this is going on. Make sure that this is in. 
But you are already healed. That's right. You are already healed. That's right. So in a moment, we're going to pray. I want to first give these two prophetic words that I heard. One for this house, and um, and you can judge it, Pastor. Judge it, judge it, judge it, judge it. I'm so serious. Judge it. Yeah. Okay. Like you can say right now. Okay. And thank you for trusting me. So this is what I heard. Break the curse of lingering death, preventing life from springing forth. Now, this is, has nothing to do with uh, your deceased husband. This has happened quite a while ago. This has to do with the pandemic. This has to do with cursed words spoken during the operation of the spirit of Pan. Words that align with the spirit of Pan to remove the church from the place in the spirit that there is a place that uh, uh, glory, his glory ministry, right? His yes. glory, yes. saying it right, yes. his glory ministries has in the spirit. You have a place in the spirit. And so during the pandemic, there were voices that spoke against specifically this place. In the kingdom of heaven, every church has people that are members in particular. Scripture says each member has a place within the body and a place to fulfill in the body. When the place is being fulfilled, when it's active and the people and the members are alive, the function of the body of Christ is increased. We all agree there, right? Yeah. Yeah. But when the members in particular are out of place, out of pocket, misstepping, they cause the body of Christ to be lacking in that area, in that area where they are purposed to be. It's a short word, but the word has to do with the cursed words that were spoken against the place that you're in. And I saw it like a puzzle. It's like you have a place that only you can feel in this neighborhood, in this city, in this area. You have a place that only you can feel. And the enemy has come to try to remove your place So this is my prayer, because the enemy is trying to displace you, and the, the out the out of joint state of existing is being turned around in Jesus' name. Amen. That out of joint feel, it's like he's locking you back in, <laughs> and you will not be disconnected, but you will be. In joint, you will not be out of joint. You will be connected as a member in particular and will gather people once again in this house to be trained to go out to do the work of the ministry in the neighborhoods, in the cities, and other nations. I heard lights. I saw lights as a light. You are a light. A light for a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. No more shadow of death. No more shadow of death over the property. No more shadow of death yeah. over this ministry. No more shadow of death over the people. No more, no more shadow of death over the plans. So we break the power of the enemy to keep a dark cloud over yeah. the east door of the ministry. When I, when I heard that, I wasn't even sure if you have an east door. And I still don't know if you have an east door, because I don't ever know if so north, south, east, and west. <laughs> but, but yeah. And then I heard this word for you, Pastor. I heard warrior princess. Mm. Well, need I say any more then? Okay, so I heard warrior princess. I, and, So, so here's, here's the word. We break the struggle to recharge. Mm -hmm. like, like a rechargeable battery, you have recharged your life, but the ministry has been limping alongside many other mem mem uh, ministries during this pandemic, but you have sought the Lord on one hand for greater intimacy with the Father, and on the other hand, you have fought to keep this place functioning in the natural and in the spirit. You are a warrior on one hand, 
and a princess in the eyes of God, on the other hand. And I heard the father say, don't take your prince's nature lightly when seen in the presence of your daddy, God, because you will release the sword of the warrior princess on darkness and the enemy. As if to say that we should not try to take advantage of Princess Pam. <laughs> because when she gets in the presence of the Lord, she just is so, you know, I'm just so weak in his presence. Don't even try to take advantage of that because the Father says you're a warrior, you will pick up the sword. I have more. God says you are coming up higher and you are being told what to do and shown what to do. Coming up higher is about strategy. I heard the word strategy. You are, I saw this, I saw you were around a table and plans. Now the way I saw it was like this wood table and uh, it's like it's just a beautiful rustic wood table kind of like they do in the movies but it's just sitting in the middle of a, of a room and there's just papers all over it. And you and the father are around this table strategizing as he has taken you higher oh so gosh. that you, you, you both can strategize. You are around the table. There's plans on the table. And the father says, the father says uh, that you're going higher to release strategies to you like an eagle. You are moving towards the sun, S-U-N. Eagles always move towards the sun when the enemy is trying to get to them. I don't know if you know that, but when they, they don't ever have to fight the enemy. They just fly towards the sun and the enemy <laughs> just drops off. And the Father says that you are releasing strategies like an eagle as you move towards the sun. You are gaining insight and then you will turn and you will dive towards the earth fulfilling this strategy. So you're going up to get it and you're coming down to release it. So we know how to, and we know when to proceed. To how and when, very important things. Yes. For plans have a timing, he said, that dictate the success of the plan. So you know how to, and you know when. Yes. It's about timing. And the Father gives you the plan and the timing in the secret place to execute in the public place. Does that make sense? That's great. <laughs> he, says, he says this, I am clearing your mind. As in all of that, all that stuff going on in your head where you feel like you just can't think clear. I am clearing your mind, says God. And I'm giving you focus and I'm giving you clarity of thought. He says, you will know and you will understand what you know. Yeah. That's two things. Yeah. To know it and understand what you know. He says you apply what you know and see down the road clearly so you can come back and warn others of the spiritual obstacle. I give you insight and oversight for accuracy as you build. I forgot what this word it said when I was talking about expanding uh, the wall. But there's something about building with this. And, and you just told me this tonight. You were talking about. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Very we were talking about building people. Yeah. People that yeah. folks don't want to touch. The religious people don't want to touch. Yeah. Religious yeah. people don't want to be around. We were just talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> God always knows what he's doing. <laughs> so this is what I heard about the worship before I'm done. Today's worship is, is to break the powers of darkness. Yeah. Darkness that is loomed like a shadow over this ministry is being removed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The Father said you will do more. Listen, you will do more than the best days that you've experienced already. Jesus. You will do more than the best days you've already seen. And you've already seen a lot of good days. But you're going to do more 
than all of those good days. He said, as we worship today, angel armies shall ride out on the praises of the people and execute justice in the heavens and you shall see the hand of the Lord push back the clouds, yeah. revealing the light of his glory that rests on us. I know you probably won't worship now, but we, 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 uh, we were doing that. Yeah. I my wife and I, we talk about, and because uh, we're husband and wife, and so um, we were talking today about it doesn't matter who comes because the assignment is what's always right. Right. Uh, first and foremost. God gives you an assignment and then he doesn't tell you how many people are going to show up. He just says, this is your assignment. And so the assignment is to remove the shadow through worshiping. But we didn't have to sing about the shadow. Shadow's going to go. Shadow's going to go. We didn't have to sing about the shadow. We just have to worship. And then the shadow is pushed back as the light of Jesus begins to shine. So we make him the biggest thing. And all the shadows have to go. And what I like about what you guys were doing was you just trusted us and you, you began to follow us. And so then we were able to go together. Yes. Everybody doesn't do that. I don't care if it's two people, three people, or 5,000 people. Everybody doesn't do that. Everybody doesn't just start getting in. And we're just going to worship with you. Yeah. Wherever you go, we're going to go. But you could sense in your, I could sense that your heart was for yes. what we're doing. Yeah. Just as much as I can sense when it's not. And so I've been in a lot of places where it's not. But because it is, that's why you don't have to worship now. And you have to feel like, gosh, I wish he had said that before. <laughs> then I would have worshiped with that in mind. No, we, we did that. Yeah. We did that. Yes. We did that. Yes. We did that. We thank you, Father, for your word. We activate your word in this room. We activate your word over your warrior princes in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for the shadow of death is being removed, has been removed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for giving Pastor Pam insight and oversight. We thank you, Father, that she will rise and then she will fall into and give us the instruction that we will need and then she will rise again and proceed to get more plans and then come in and give us more as we need to proceed. Thank you, Father, for giving her foresight so she can come back and tell the people what they need and what they don't need to do, where they need and don't need to go. We thank you, Father, for peace in her mind, peace in her heart, peace in her spirit, clarity. We thank you, Father, for the mind of Christ and not the mind of people. We thank you, Father, that you are clearing up the fogginess. You're removing all the fogginess. Thank you, Father, for clarity right now that comes to it. Clarity when she sleeps at night and wakes up in the morning, when she stands right here on this platform, when she's making the plans. We thank you for clarity in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Okay, so I know that that is the biggest part of my assignment. The next part, if, if you have, um, and, and if you, if pastor, if you need to say, yeah, activate it, but don't activate that part, we won't receive that part, just let me know. Um, Cause it's, okay, it's right on, all right. Um, who needs prayer tonight? I believe when we were worshiping, there was a moment when we were worshiping that I sensed Father in the room and healing was going forth. Yeah. And um, I, I don't know, you know, I don't know what's going on in your body. Everything, this is what I learned, everything doesn't happen in the body first. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the things that are happening in our body are the fruit of what's happened in our emotions, yeah. in our mind, yeah. in our heart. Mm -hmm. And when you clear that ground, then you clear yeah. The fruit changes. That's good. In church, you know, we get very religious and we want to see somebody's fruit change. But the, the seed is still the same. Because it's still, it's like another fruit will grow. Instead of, we cut that vine off with the sword of the spirit so that it can't grow back. And you get your healing or you get your miracle, whatever that is. But sometimes the thing has to come out of the heart. Sometimes it has to come out of the emotions. Sometimes, you know, they, statistics 
Statistics say that in every woman's life, it's usually men that have messed up women. It's, and they say usually it's the, it's all the men, you know, from daddy to brothers to uh, cousins, all that, messing up women. And then women trying to grow and, and be women having a hard time because of the men in their life, husbands, all that. And we, we think that our bodies are not gonna be affected by the trauma that happens in our heart or the trauma that we're dealing with mentally. It's already been proven that stress is a stressor that causes imbalances in the body. I know, I know, and we, we don't know, I know you just wanna get a healing, but you, to keep your healing, sometimes you have to get peace in your life. The Bible says, yeah, I will keep you in, a, there's a, there's a perfect peace that comes, that you can obtain. And why is that important? Why does God give us things like, you know what, if you just keep focusing on me, I'll give you this perfect peace. And if you keep your mind stayed on me, focus on me. Why is that? Because he knows, because he's the creator, right? Yeah. So, because he knows that if you get out of peace, you're gonna start dealing with stress. And if you start dealing with stress long enough, it's just like, this is light right now when I pick it up. But if I continue to hold it for the rest of the night, this becomes heavy. And sometimes we're picking up stuff that are light and then we keep picking up more stuff and picking up more stuff. And it, it's light and we're like, oh, you know, we can bear, I can bear it, you know, I can hold on to it, I can deal with it, I'm, you know. And then you hold on to it for so long that this thing right here becomes like, I can't, I can't bear this. I know it's just a little light affirmity, infirmity, whatever you want to call it, a light affliction. I know it's a light affliction, but this light affliction has been here so long, this stuff is heavy. And so then you start thinking what's going on in your body is super serious. And it seems like it's impossible for you to get the miracle, the healing that you need. But all it is is just this eight ounces, 14 ounces, I don't know, 12. That's causing all this other stuff in your life because now your body's compensating. Why does your body compensate? Because that's how he made the body. We think everything is a miracle and a healing. Everything ain't a miracle and a healing. You gotta drink water to stay lubricated. You gotta eat food. You can't just ask God to do a miracle in your body. I mean, you could just eat. You can't ask them to do something different when you just eat junk all the time, all the time. Derek Thomas, I'm just talking to myself. Just talking to myself. If Derek eats junk all the time, why Derek gonna pray and ask the Lord to take the sugar out, take the sugar out, take the, take the sugar out when he designed the body just the way that he is because he is creator God to operate a certain kind of way. You know, if I'm left and right, why do I want to walk on my hands and be asking for a miracle? I got two feet, turn it over, walk left and right. Some things don't need a miracle. They just need you to change your habit. Oh, that's good. And so, I'm not just qualifying healing and miracle. I'm what I'm talking about is common sense, which yeah. is what we sometimes have lost in yeah. the body of Christ because yeah. we want we want the microwave thing to happen. You know. Like, you got it. Yeah. You know, let me blow on you when all you need to do, maybe push the plate back or do some exercise or, you know, have somebody pray about that thing in your life that happened that caused a tra traumatic event in your life. And now you're, tra trauma opens doors. Trauma opens doors and then the enemy is able to come in and kind of like take a place. And the Bible says don't give a place to the devil. Don't, right. don't give him any place. And you think to yourself, I'm not giving him any place, but then you get in a, you get in a car accident. That's traumatic. You have, a, you have a divorce. That's traumatic. Relationship, this is death of relationship. All these things, things that happen in our life and they affect us. And, the sound of it begins to affect your life. And you just have to be aware that when God tells us things, 
like get under the shadow of my wings. He's saying that for a reason. I'm going to hide you in a, in a secret place so that you can recover. So you can recharge, like we were talking about in that word earlier. He wants to allow you to have a place to recharge where the enemy can't get to you. He says, look to the hills from which comes your strength or, and your help comes from the Lord. But you have to look away from all the other stuff and begin to look toward the place. What are these hills he's talking about? He's talking about Jerusalem because Jerusalem is a place you go up to. And you, so they're going up to a place and they were going to have feast of the Lord and sacrifice and all this other stuff is going to go on. He says, look to the hills from which comes your help. Your help comes from the Lord. Not everything, not everything has to be a miracle or healing, but we believe in healing as a miracle, right? Yes. Yes, we do. Because the guy in the pool of Bethesda yes. was sitting there and he said, you know what? I've been, I've been here for 38 years and I just have not been able to get there fast enough because the angel, whenever that angel comes, it's not on the same data. Uh, it just, there he is, and I'm not able to get there. That can make you feel like you're out of step. That can make you feel like you're lost. That can make you feel like depressed and so many other things and cause you to live a certain way. And so tonight, I just, I'm, I'm going to pray. Anybody wants some special prayer? Um, you let us know. You just come to the front in a moment. I'm going to pray a prayer over everyone first, and then um, uh, we'll go from there. Is that all right? Yes. All right, Father, we, we love you. We thank you for your people. Thank you that you are creator God. We thank you, Father, for the way that you have designed us. And so we submit our will and our thoughts to your plans and your designs for our physical life, Father. And you know the things that are going on in our bodies. You know the things that are going on that are hindering us, that are causing us to be distracted. You know the things that are going on in the feet, in the knees, in the hips, in the back, in the, in the face, in the sinuses, in the blood. Father, you know the things going on in the bones. You, you know the things that are going on in our muscles and our nervous system and the, all of the systems of the body. We thank you that you are completely aware as creator God. And so we know that. We know that. And so, Father, it's not our idea, but it's it's your idea. What, Whatever that is that's hindering it from us having what you have already designed and planned for us to have, where we would walk in divine health. We open up ourselves, Father, to divine health, divine strength now in Jesus' name. Let every work of darkness be removed now in the name of Jesus. Let every hindrance to the presence of the Lord be removed now in the name of Jesus. And take away every thought that would try to hinder us from running through a troop and leaping over a wall to get to you, Father. Remove every hindrance in Jesus' name. I speak to every demonic force in this room, in the body of any person here now, and I command it to come off you, to leave you now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that you might be whole in your body. We thank you, Father, for wholeness in our body, in the knees, wholeness in the knees, whoever's having knee problems. We thank you, Father, for wholeness in the knees. Somebody's neck, we thank you, Father, for wholeness in the bones, in the neck, in Jesus' name. Speak to sinuses. We say sinuses open up and be whole, be healed in Jesus' name. Blood, blood disease. We command you now to line up in the name of Jesus. Diabetes, we call you out in Jesus' name. We say go, go in Jesus' name. We will not maintain and manage sickness. We will not maintain and manage infirmity, spirit of infirmity up and out in Jesus' name. Come off, come out in Jesus' name traveling around get out of the body yes. we lose our bodies from sickness now in jesus name i take authority and i say all bodies be loosed right now from sickness and disease and infirmity in the name of jesus come on i believe this i believe this i believe this i believe this, believe this. The bible says you have what you say 
It is his desire that we prosper and that we are in good health, even as our soul prospers. Yes, Lord. We speak to any area of trauma, doors that have been opened, serious doors that have been opened in our heart, in our emotions, triggers that the enemy keeps using to pull us back into place. I know trauma is serious, but it but 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 he's more serious about you. Yeah. So now we speak to your traumatic situation, Father. We th we thank you that in each traumatic situation that you are there yes. and you are revealing yourself in the room of that traumatic situation and that you are healing your people in the midst of that traumatic situation so that it is trauma no more, no more carousel adventures, no more triggers, no more going round and round this thing. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, seasonal trauma. Things coming on you in certain times, in certain seasons, always in certain times of the year because of family loss or be, be familiar loss because of some other thing that's happened traumatically in your life. And that season comes around and around and it goes around and every October, every November, every February, you're dealing with trauma. We say stability to your life in Jesus' name. And that the footwork of trauma be removed so that your life can be stable and whole in the name of Jesus. We speak to confusion, confusion in the mind. Yes. You don't know, you're not sure what to do, you're not sure what decisions to make sometimes because of confusion. We can remove the spirit of confusion in Jesus' name. We command the spirit of confusion to come off of you. Yes. If that's you, just say, Come off me, come off me. Just just rip it off of your head. In the name of Jesus. You have the mind of Christ. You have the mind of Christ. You do not have confusion. Every spirit of confusion, go. You have the mind of Christ. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Foot problems, go. Somebody's foot problems need to go now. In Jesus' name. That thing nobody sees. Nobody knows. Nobody even sees. All that limping, all that pain in the morning, go. In the name of Jesus. God cares about your feet as much as he cares about your head. The inner parts, the parts that nobody sees. Thank you, Father, that you care, that you see. And you are making it whole now, whole. Wholeness in the dark places of our bodies. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We decree it so. We stand on our healing. We will not be moved by our yeah, feelings. Right. We will be moved only by the scripture, by your word. Glory to God. Yes. Your word says we are healed yeah. and we are whole. Right. Thank you, Father, that you are the author wow. and the finisher of our faith. So we yeah. probably we present all that we are wrapped in our faith. We give it to you at your feet in worship, Father, knowing that you take care of the things that concern us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How we doing? You good out there? You good? Yeah? You want some prayer? What do you need prayer for, sir? What's your name? I know you. I know you've been here. I've seen you. Yeah, I'm lost. Um, just clarity. Going through a lot of spiritual stuff. I've been thinking about what you're saying about him staying in that place of healing and trying to be with our spiritual, spiritual clarity. Yeah. When I said confusion, I saw your face. So, um, you. Oh, you need to stay right there. That way you don't 
Ross, right? Yeah. What's wrong with your leg? speaking about Ross. You are already speaking about clarity in his mind. No more confusion. And that's why I just talking about like ripping this thing off in the spirit. Like, like, a, like a lid off of your mind in the name of Jesus. You say clarity. Clarity come. Clarity in Jesus name. When you rise and when you sleep in the name of Jesus. Thank you Father for clarity. Clarity. No more confusion. No more indecision. Yes. I hear the Father saying you, you, the, 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 he is the rock, but you have to get in the presence. I'm all about the presence. You got to get in his presence and, and, and know that he is talking to you Jesus. when you're just listening to a worship song in the presence of the Lord. It's not, it's not some big thing you have to do. It's just, you know, turn the song on and just, just sit. Yeah. You know? And then put a book in front of you that you can write on a tablet. Yep. Which whatever you hear, just write that down. He's gonna give you, he's gonna give you what you need to know. He's not like, this isn't a mystery. He does not want to hide all that from you. He wants you to know. You know, you just want to be sure that you're hearing him. And so the great thing about it, the Bible says that he makes crooked paths. So if you go around the wrong path, he'll straighten out that path. Yes. Yeah. But you got to at least get on the path. Jesus. Which is trust. Mm. Right? So no more confusion. Like, how should I? Is, mm. is that me or is that God? Mm. It's, it's God. Mm -hmm. Is that God or is it me? It's probably God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pray for your leg. Is this like a permanent thing? <laughs> Well, it's been healed, actually. Well, thank you. Yeah, and so, uh, okay, just sit down. Because, uh, we'll, we'll, so, uh, yeah. what is it, the knee? Yeah, foot. The foot? Yeah, scars. I walked bone on bone. Put it up there. I walked bone on bone. Yeah, it's all thick and soft. Thank you, Father, right now. Right now, thank you for Ross. Ankle that you do a complete work. We curse the pain in Jesus' name. Father, we know that there was surgery done, but right now you unlock it. Unlock it, Holy Spirit. Remove all the inflammation and the discomfort in the name of Jesus. Give him a whole ankle, a whole yes. leg. Perfect walking, yes. running in the name of Jesus. We pray for him. We say miracle. Give him a miracle. Give him a miracle. I hear a miracle even as you go. Like the like the like the, the, the group of guys that came and they they got something and then they left and one returned. I hear the father say, You get your miracle as you go. Praise God. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Got to be touching feet. Hallelujah. You know you get your deal. Yeah. All right. <laughs> hey, thanks for having us here. Does anybody else want some prayer before we go? Um, yes. Come on down. Okay. <laughs> what you need? Oh, I just need God to come through with um, this job that I got, and something from my past is holding me back. So. So, you want to give me any more? Then you want me to figure it out for you. <laughs> figure it out. <laughs> I just need. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, this is what I hear. Um, past disappointment and relationship. Uh, I know you. Did you marry right over here or two? Uh, you're not? Okay. How come I thought you and God knew? <laughs> Sorry. We should be. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> God? <laughs> Don't make me start praying. 
But I, but yeah, uh, so disappointment in relationship uh, in the past is hindering you in your now. However that looks to you, is that good, wrong, or right? Right. Because you told me you figure it out, so. Yes. And uh, I hear a year, was it a year ago? How long ago? Hmm? Okay. You said figure it out. Here's a great thing about the Holy Spirit is that he doesn't reveal it because he's gonna mess with you. He does it because he's gonna he's gonna handle it. Not to just be like, oh, they figured it out. No, it's because he's getting ready to remove pain. Remove the heartache. Even take it out of you, out of your what I like to see say is like your cellular memory. So then you're not having those triggers when you think you heard somebody say something. And you think that's the same thing all over again. It's not like uh, you've had temporary. You've seen temporary. You've seen it like painted over, where it was. It looked better, but it wasn't. And the father says, "I'm going to make it. I'm going to sew it up. I'm going to stitch it up. I'm going to stitch it up right now." Holy Spirit, we thank you for your peace. This is the last time you're gonna cry about it. Thank you for your peace. We speak to this situation. And we send the fire of the spirit. steps in the name of Jesus. All the misfiring in Jesus' name. Spirit of the Lord saying, I love you. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that uh, you have thought that he had fallen out of love with you. <laughs> yeah. But neither did you fall out of love with him, nor did he fall out of love with you. Sometimes we have crooked paths, like we were talking about with Ross, but it doesn't mean that he's not there. Doesn't mean he's not watching. Doesn't mean he's not kidding. He's not mad at you, as we like to say. If he ain't mad at me, he ain't mad at you. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 uh, 
Um, even even tonight when you sleep, it's going to be different. It's going to be like this washing, this uh, like removing of that that ugh. You know? Yeah. Like ugh, just coming off of you. I even see it like like just, like you know how you put water on you and it just like drips. Like your makeup is dripping and no, yes. you're fine now. Yeah. yeah. But you know how it just drips and it's and it, pretty soon you don't look like you used to look. <coughs> That's how it's gonna be. It's just it's wow. just him washing. You're not gonna look like you used to look. Guys, gonna get on the ball. <laughs> Guy. <laughs>
was like 18. We was very close. We was together all the time. And I mean, I have always had a great relationship with God, but it's really like, y'all that's couples, don't take it for granted. I'm not kidding. Honor each other. If you're about to have a fight, don't let it last. <laughs> for real. Because I was 25 years with that man, and it was, it was war becoming one. And we really did. And I'm like, God, you didn't kind of tell me how to become on one. And it's hard. It really is to, to figure out your whole world without somebody. So celebrate each other. But I know God's awesome. He gave us this church and that house. And three months later, Paul passed. So he sees some of me. I ain't seen him yet. So thank you for the word. I appreciate everybody's prayers. I do cry out for direction. I don't take it lightly. I don't, you know, I cried out to God, I'm like, God, i seen this house full. We only have 25 parking spots. And he so gently says, Pam, what's your heart and who do you minister to? I'm like, hmm, drug addicts, addicted, they're afflicted. He said, they don't have cars. Wow. Put a bike rent. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, guys, it really is. The sun is seeking. It's time to go after him like yeah, you never have. Yeah. I think everybody here is really, you know, sometimes you're with church people and then you're with really people that love the Lord. And I, yeah. I think I can say that. But seriously, we've got to go after him. We've got to get in that secret place. We have to get a plan because you better know the enemy's got one. Yeah. And his plan is to take you out. Yeah. And don't get so cozy and comfortable to think you're so good and Christian that you can't. Because he can yeah. find a crack in yeah. your broken heart or whatever and get a hook in your jaw before you know what happened. Exactly right. We have to be strategic, guys. We really do. And pray for each other. Yeah. Yeah. I wish to God, if as many people talked about me, have been praying for me, <laughs> I'd be flying with some angel wings right now. Right now. <laughs> For real, we need to pray for each other. Yeah. If you see somebody going through a hard time, don't talk about it. Be Come like, on now. My God. Come on. We're worse than the world. Right? Come on. The That's world right. will be idiots and they hanging each other. Oh, wow. Good job, dude. <laughs> you know, like, they can be a devil and, and support each other and have each other's back. The church destroys one another. Yeah. we got to stop it. Especially now, because the enemy's using us against each other. And he's like, I only got to fight that when you guys are taking care of him for me. Yeah. It's serious days. It really is. Yeah. I don't like to be the doom and gloom kind of person. Because I know God has a final say. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And I believe for every evil force that's being released, God's getting ready to do something so awesome. It's going to blow all of us away. Yes. I, I do. I know. I, I, I know. It. I know. Like, here's how simple I am. I'm like... Yeah. Paul would teach, and we'd have like 45 guys recovering from addicts, addictions, and stuff. And he'd go way up there, and I'd kind of nudge him under the table, like, you went off and left them. And you're like college level. They don't know what you're saying. So he would see it, and I'd bring it back down to kindergarten level. Just see it where they can get it. Here's how simple I am. My God's not going to be outdone. <laughs> Amen. That's right. He ain't going to be outdone. He's God. He's God. <laughs> So with the devil, like, nah, really magnified right now. We hear a whole lot more devil stuff. But if, if you watch the news, don't do that, man. Don't do that to yourself. <laughs> right. <laughs> he, will, he will beat your brains out right now with devil stuff. We don't hear enough about God, but I believe. And every time I turn on something, I'm like, is my TV hear my prayers? <laughs> I was crying out the other day for restoration, and I just was praying. I always quiet in the ho house myself now. And I thought, I'm going to just give me some preaching. I hit YouTube. The first person popped up was on restoration, and it was powerful. Your TV probably is listening to it. I like to think it was God, but I think the TV's listening to it. <laughs> you got these smart TVs, they know stuff. <laughs> but I'm going to give God the credit for it anyway because it lets me. <laughs> but it's serious days, guys. It is. You know what I mean? It's, uh, we're winding things up. God's coming back for us. We want to be found ready. Don't we? Amen. I want to be found shining his light. Yes. And I've always heard yes. his, his light shines the brightest through cracked vessels. That's right. 
I've got some cracks. But my Abba Father was always there to pull it yeah. together. Yes, Lord. I always said there's a peace missing in my life. I found out that peace is Jesus Christ. Yeah. And that's the one thing nobody can ever take away from me. Yeah. You know what? They might yeah. can take care. They can't take my Jesus. <laughs> they can't tell me he don't love me. I'm like right. well, he done proved to me times it does. In fact, I kind of think I'm his favorite. No, uh-huh. You guys all pray that maybe you'll feel it too. But I know. I, I know. I, that's one thing I do. Know. I don't know. Like I ain't got a lot of favor with men sometimes. With God, yes. And that may because he's jealous. He wants let these guys have me. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. Thank you. I love the sweet presence, the spirit. I, I didn't have to wonder what you was going to do. I didn't ask the questions. I just know your heart when you're trying. Anybody that's right. going after the heart of the Father. That's right. In whatever style, fashion, instrument, sound, tone, I'm about that. This whole church really was founded on going after his presence and his glory. So. If you're not going after his presence, you might need to get saved. <laughs> That's what it's all about. We have to go after his presence, and he fills us up, equips us, and we are going to be able to make a difference in this world. If you don't love his presence, if you don't love worship, you no. might not like heaven. <laughs> you know, when I was trying to conduct and feel what the Lord was telling me, and I know the vision was beautiful. He wanted red and yellow, black and white, rich and poor, addicted and those that have never known him. Traditional music, anything that glorified the Lord. And man, I have these people. You can't do that. Or we don't want those addictive people in here. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a flash back. Oh, like, that's the Father's heart. Oh, it's not my idea. Oh. I'm not that smart. I ain't like no control freak, man. I'm smart enough to know if it ain't God, just stay home. So let's pray. Yes, it's church, guys. Yes. The religious structure is big, man. It's got to come down. It's yeah, embarrassing it me for Jesus. Wow. Yeah. I'll get like a redneck old Medea, man, when you talk about my Jesus. <laughs> you got to him. I, I really will. You mess with my kids or my Jesus. Like, he really needs me to defend him, but I do. I'll go ballistic on people. Anyway, pray for me, mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear God. Oh, Lord, I just oh, thank, thank you, God. Lord. I, I just thank you, God, in the midst of Hallelujah. everything. I, yeah. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes, Lord, Lord, thank I so you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for the peace that passes all understanding, God. Mm. We do cry out for understanding, God, but in those things we don't. And the mysteries and the things that come and go and come against us, I thank you, God, that there's a peace that passes we can press into that. And that's how we live. And we go to sleep at night and we wake up the next day knowing you're there, God. I know that. I'm going to pray everybody here knows me. I pray, God, the sweet presence that was here tonight, God, would just linger in our cars as we go home. Yes. We would just ponder on what the Lord did. Sometimes you show us, God, sometimes you don't. So let us just press in. Let us press in, God. Whatever you did tonight, just magnify it. Let me see it, God. Let us come back and testify about it. So I pray to bless his brother, his family, this ministry. God, bless him, Jesus. Bless him, God. Let him just, every house in this town, whatever that calls you, Jesus, let them come and usher in the presence and be a part of unifying the body, God. We've got to come. Together, Jesus. Yes. I know you're coming for one church, yes. so I pray, yes. God, help us know our part and bring the unity, God. Yes. We love you, Jesus. We honor you. We thank you for your healing of us here tonight, God. We thank you. You're just amazing, 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 beautiful. We thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. awesome. You wow. believe it? Let me sit down and tell you about a thousand stories. Yeah, like Pam. Pam. <laughs> Thank you for the Lord. I needed that. Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh, yeah. I forgot. Anybody's got any money they want to give? <laughs> <laughs> I really ain't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry, I had to be a brat. No, we do. I pray if anybody wants to sow into the ministry, you know. Thank you. <laughs> and if anybody sees my keys, they're kind of like me. They're right my there. Oh, God, so good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. I thought I left them outside for the peace. <laughs> Pray for the ministry, too, you guys. Man. Pray for the house. And it's getting ready to open. It really is. Give me a call for real. I want to know that you got you pricked my ear when you said I can't imagine that story. Give me something about Moses. 